the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then, from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. of Isabel and her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight and his faithful knights. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Gwyn's mighty gods grew the hard western skins. The witches moved great firestorms. Soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless lights. And amongst the living are seen carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world.
And here we are. Welcome to the Northern Undead Asylum. The first part of my, well, video walkthrough. Um, there's not much to say here. I'll be reading out the uh, tutorial messages. But if you know the game, these are not news to you. However, on the first playthrough, they just tell you the controls. It's somewhat nice. And you also meet your first enemies in this corridor. But they are not actually hostile. Even if you hit them, they will never retaliate. They try to move away a little, but that's about it. So this is obviously the first visit to the tutorial. As we progress through the game, we will be able to return here and actually do things that we are not able to do in the first time. Here we have the first slight water obstacle. You might notice that the movement is impaired as I move through the water. Obviously in this particular case it doesn't matter because there's no dangerous enemy or anything actually hostile. But something to keep in mind for later in the game. Water is an impediment and will hinder your movement. However, there will also be ways around that. <clears throat> On this courtyard to the side there is a door. We can't open this yet, it's a shortcut. Generally if a door says does not open from this side, you can open it from the other side. And behind this gate awaits our first boss. If you move a step back and look up, you can see it. This is the Asylum Demon. And there is also a gate at the back of the boss arena. However, you're not actually able to open it yet. And similarly, there's a message on the ground telling you to get away. So this is the game hinting at you that you're not really meant to fight this right now. You could if you really wanted to. And um, something special happens if you do. But it's not a major reward. And it's certainly not terribly feasible with a broken sword. So I'll show you later how to do it quote unquote correctly. And here in this corridor you get your starting shield and later on your starting weapon. This depends on your choice of class. If you want information on the choice of class, look at my, well, starting class videos. The first item is the shield, which you can equip and this enables you to block the arrows that this hollow is shooting at you meaning you can get through this corridor without being pelted by arrows. Of course it's also possible to just sidestep or roll through the arrows, but those, um, those means are slightly more advanced. Blocking is very basic and simple. And then the second corpse has your weapon. In the case of this character it's a dagger. Obviously, this will be something a little better if you've chosen a more physically focused starting class. And then through the fog gate we get some more tutorial messages. This tells you how to roll and backstep, which is very nice for avoiding damage in many situations. Especially the rolls are very valuable. And the item up there is an item you cannot get this first time through. So we'll get to that on the second walkthrough of this area. As you go here, you can move down these stairs and open this door. This is the door you could not open from the other side. And to the right is the boss. You can still hear him. However, nothing you can do there right now. Up these stairs, however, there's a trap. If you move just as I did and stay to the very right of the stairs as you go down, you'll be safe. Oh, you. You're no hollow, are you? Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. 
in thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Oh, and this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now, and thank you. And now there's some more messages appearing telling you how to use items. And that your Estus refills at a bonfire. Now going up to where the boulder or iron ball rolled down, you can find the guy who set off the trap and avenge yourself. <clears throat> I'll show later on what happens if you say no to that knight, by the way. It's not spectacular. And here we get some more advanced combat techniques. There's kicks and jumping attacks. Um, these have various utilities in various situations. And there's also the option to two-hand your weapon. This makes it deal more damage, but also consume more stamina. And it gives you a different moveset, which might be better or worse, depending on the situation. And then there's one more archer to deal with. And the last of the tutorials telling you how to use spells and plunging attacks. And here we have a slightly heavier char character. So I'll go more into detail on, about these things in a different video, but I just wanted to touch on it very briefly in this one. Um, my character is currently above 25% of his maximum equip load, and that means he is moving slightly slower. Uh, if I press Y here, you will see that my equip load is 21.4 out of 52. And so that's under 50%, but above 25%. This is what's called a mid-roll, which means my rolls and movements will be slightly encumbered, but still decent. Now this is what it looks like when I take off the armor, putting myself below 25%. Very nice. Now the game just told you about plunging attacks, and here's how you do one. This is actually a slight bonus damage that I got there. If instead of just dropping off and doing a plunging attack using the RB, you can also do a jumping attack, so that's the forward and R2, or RT on an Xbox controller. And this will give you the damage from the jumping attack and the damage from the plunging attack in one. So as you saw, I did a small chunk of damage first and then the big chunk of damage afterwards. It's just a slight increase of damage making this fight a bit easier on yourself. And then that's Asylum Demon done. There will be a more detailed boss walkthrough if you need one. Now this is what happens if you kill Asylum Demon on the first encounter. To do that you probably want black fire bombs as your starting gift. So I'm doing this on a thief because the thief still gets the master key. But again more on that in the individual class videos. Yeah, I'm messing around with buttons a bit, but um, Asylum does not have that much health. He can die from five black fire bombs, assuming you don't miss any. If you miss, obviously, you're gonna need more. And you can also do four and do the rest with your broken sword. It's still gonna be quite slow, but it's gonna work. As a reward, you get the Demon's Great Hammer. There's the stats. Um, it's pretty useless really, because it has a very high strength requirement. So as a newly created character, you won't be able to use it anyway. And here the rest of the tutorial is basically unchanged, so I'm moving through until the next time something different happens, which is during the conversation with Oscar. That's the knight's name, by the way. 
Yes, I see. Perhaps I was too hopeful. <laughs> Please leave me be. I now. So if you say no, this is just what he does. Please, I have not long to live, and I now. He's disappointed, and he does not allow you to change your choice. <laughs> And this means in order to progress you need to kill him. As a reward you then get the Estus Flask and the Asylum Key and also the Big Pilgrim's Key. Otherwise this would be dropped by Asylum, but since he's already dead, Oscar gives it to you. And then, well, you can leave. As you leave the Asylum, there's a hopeful message. And um, if you explore around a little bit to the right, you'll find a bird's nest. There's nothing you can do with it yet, but it will become relevant later on. And then on the other side, there's a fairly, fairly well hidden soul item. Um, it's not terribly useful, but it exists. So there you go. That's everything you can do the first time through the Undead Asylum. The only thing left to do now is make your way to the cliff's edge. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordra. Okay, and this is where we'll continue next time. Any feedback would be highly appreciated, and I hope you got some use out of this. Next time we'll be dealing with Firelink Shrine. Bye bye.